The Sega Dreamcast was Sega's fifth and final video game console. It was released in 1999 and was in competition with the PlayStation 2, Microsoft's Xbox, and the Nintendo GameCube. I wanted to create a video explaining how the Dreamcast's startup sound was put together, but as it turned out, the startup sound is a single, pre-mixed recording. Extracting the BIOS from the console is beyond the scope of this video, but I was finally able to take a look through the BIOS and hunt around for some audio. Uh, my general approach to examining any data file for which I don't have compatible software includes looking through the binary data as text, which will appear mostly as gibberish but has some human readable text in there, sometimes, viewing it as images, and of course, listening to it as sound. The Dreamcast BIOS is 2 megabytes in size. That's half the size of the PlayStation 2 BIOS, which is interesting because the startup sound in the PS2 is synthesized on the fly, using minimal audio samples while the Dreamcast stores it all as one audio file roughly 344 kilobytes in size. That's about 17% of the total size of the BIOS. The Dreamcast has a 200 MHz processor, 16 MB of RAM, 2 MB dedicated to audio, and 8 MB dedicated to graphics. Within the BIOS is the system software for playing games, playing audio CDs, managing the memory cards, configuring the console, and the animation and sound for the boot sequence. It's quite amazing that all of that fits into a mere 2 MB! The ARM-based audio processor supports up to 64 voices, which makes it more than capable of synthesizing the startup sound on the fly, yet it doesn't. The Dreamcast also had a dial-up modem, which was something relatively new for game consoles at the time. Alright, let's start examining the raw BIOS data. The machine code and a lot of the data will appear as gibberish in text and static when interpreted as images or sound. It looks like there are some interface elements in here. And there's a bit of human readable text scattered throughout the data. And here at the end of the data we have some recognizable sound. This is, of course, the startup sound, although I've imported it here as IMA ADPCM. And by the way, ADPCM stands for Adaptive Differential Pulse Code Modulation. The actual format used from what some research has shown is Yamaha's proprietary implementation of ADPCM. In addition to the Yamaha ADPCM format, the Dreamcast also supports the CRI middleware ADX format, which is also based on ADPCM. Without any software that can handle importing raw data in this format, the best I can do is use other ADPCM codecs to import it. This results in less than perfect decoding, but we can still hear what it is. Sounds bad, but it is what it is. Now, if I can find a way to convert this properly sometime, that'd be cool. If there were headers, FFmpeg or Sound Exchange would probably be able to read and transcode it. Unfortunately, there's no header for this audio data. Fortunately, however, we do have a clean copy of the audio from the console itself. Next up, we're going to import this as 32kbps NMS ADPCM, that's Natural Microsystems Adaptive Differential Pulse Code Modulation. Still crackly and noisy, but this is definitely the audio from the startup. Again, unfortunately, I don't have a way to import Yamaha's ADPCM format, especially without the proper headers, which the console didn't need since it was programmed to already have all the information needed to play the audio. 
So anyway, also within the BIOS software are the 3D assets and raster graphics for the menu system, as well as the, hmm, sometimes obnoxious sound effects for the menus. I guess going through the menus at 3 a.m. isn't really an option, even with headphones. Although these other sound effects are in the BIOS, I was not able to locate them by examining the raw data, and none of the software tools I have were able to extract them. First, here's the original. Now here's my recreation of the Dreamcast startup sound. This is the lead instrument. It's a noisy sine wave instrument, more or less. It's sometimes called an air bell or an air chime. This synth calls it a pole lead. The notes here are D, E, B, B, E, and D flat. On a piano roll, those are D7, E5, B6, B5, E6, and D flat 7. Here's the lead instrument again on another track because I exported the audio to reverse the sound. This is the lead instrument, reversed. It's a D5. The synth pad holds for most of the duration of the startup sound. It's A4, B4, D5, and F sharp 5. Then we have a bass tone underneath it all. It's an E4. This heartbeat sound is played as a B-flat 3, but getting it to sound right is less about which note is played, and more about setting up the sound correctly. I'm just using a square wave lead sound here, but with loads of distortion, heavy EQ to bring up the low end and squash the high end, and using a filter to do the same. Lots of reverb and delay were added as well. The airy noise sound that fades in about halfway through was created by using a few cymbal sounds in a drum kit patch, again with tons of reverb, EQ, and a filter. The notes I used were B flat 3, E flat 4, and G sharp 4, but this is specific to this particular drum kit patch and is otherwise irrelevant. Regarding how the pad sound is put together, I got it close by using a series of string section sounds, using a filter on those, and a couple of analog pad sounds. Again, a large amount of reverb was applied to get it to melt together. Going back to the lead instrument, I'm using a synth called Dimension LE for that one. The patch is called Pole Lead, and sounds pretty much exactly like what the Dreamcast startup uses right out of the box. I kinda doubt the creator of the original sound used this software synth because, at the time, most professionals were still using outboard hardware synths. I don't think Cakewalk even offered the Dimension software synth for Sonar back in 1999. They may have. I mean, VST plugins were invented in 1996, so it is possible. Anyway, okay, so like I said, everything is swimming in reverb. In addition to whatever reverb I applied inside the synths, I layered this reverb plugin called Ambience on most of them. It really gives everything a wide, ethereal sound to match the Dreamcast startup sound. So, here it is again. And 
And here's the original for comparison. Slight difference. The tuning on the lead is ever so slightly different. And so is that ring on the heartbeat's reverb. Well, that's how I closely approximated that famous six-note jingle of Sega's final console. The Dreamcast was a great-looking console, in my opinion. While there were some very good games for the system, including Skies of Arcadia, Resident Evil Code Veronica, and Fantasy Star Online, sales weren't quite good enough to handle the upcoming competition from the PlayStation 2. It certainly didn't help that Electronic Arts refused to develop any games for the system. In May 2000, Sega's new company president, Isao Okawa, took over. He was in favor of getting the company out of the business of producing consoles and, instead, focusing on making games for other systems. On a side note, he loaned Sega over $500 million in 1999 and forgave all of the company's debt shortly before he passed away on March 16, 2001. So. Pretty cool guy. After the Dreamcast failed to meet sales expectations, Sega withdrew from the console market. The Dreamcast was discontinued in March 2001. Well, unfortunately, I wasn't able to extract the startup audio in its proper format, but hopefully this video breaks down the Dreamcast startup a bit. This startup really is a soothing sound compared to the PlayStation startups. Thanks for watching. See you next time.